Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be working on our 7th Gen Civic again. It's 02 1.7. That's it. Done quite a bit of videos on this over the years. Um, recently I've been having an issue where when you first start the car and kind of take off, sometimes it'll just completely fall on its face, die, then it'll pick back up. So, and while you're driving it, every now and then it'll just, mm, just kind of sputter. Mm. But I've done a little bit of checking them and I'm getting no misfire counts. I'm, you know, no, it's not setting any uh, MILs or anything. So, uh, you know, no chickens or like. So, um, couldn't really put my finger on what it is. I've done, you know, live data stream on it. I uh, couldn't just, couldn't figure it out. The car had some really old issues of a uh, note front O2 sensor, PO135. It's been there since I've had the car. I've been driving like seven years and I've had that code. But the reason I didn't change it is because, well, I changed the O2 sensor with an aftermarket one. And then um, I was, still had the issue. The car ran perfect, so I didn't worry about it. And I was pretty sure it was the ECU. So trying to correct this problem, I said, let me go ahead and fix everything wrong with the car. I put Denso sensors in it and done some more problem diagnosis and it turned out to be the ECU. So we replaced it with a used ECU. Um, no more check engine lights. Drove it for several days. It finally started to act up again and it finally set a code. So let's go ahead and check that code real quick and then we'll start doing a little diagnosis on it. So we got a PO335 um, crank position sensor, circuit malfunction. Okay. No trouble could do. Okay, so that's what we got to go off of. So we're gonna start with that. Okay, now this car has 328,000 miles on it. And of course with a factory crank position sensor. So I don't recommend going out to market on, you know, uh, critical parts like that because a failing a lot of times a crank sensor can fail completely and then you're, you're stranded so this one is dying and you know it is an intermittent failure like a lot of electrical stuff is anyway so we went ahead and picked up a denso 196 196-2001 crankshaft sensor that's what it looks like Okay, now I don't, you know, just because you got a code doesn't mean that that's the problem. So I always like to do a little more, um, you know, diagnosis to make sure before we just go throwing parts at something. But with this car having 328,000 miles on it, and that Denso sensor only being like 70 bucks, so I said, I'm going to go ahead and change it. But we are going to do a little more further diagnosis just to make sure, even though I'm 98% sure that that's my problem. Then it's acting like an intermittent, uh, like a sensor failure. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and more common. It's everything time related on the driver's side of this. We're going to jack it up, support it on jack stands. We're going to pull the wheel off just to give us some extra room and pull the fender liner. Well, if need be, we'll see when we get it off. And then we'll start tearing into it. Okay, so we've got the wheel off, got supported. So let's get a look at where we're going to be working at. So we're going to be. Um, and this car didn't have any kind of liner here. So we gotta be pulling this crank pulley off. It's gonna be that single bolt, I think that's a 19. We have a tool that goes inside of this bigger hex cutout to hold uh, the crank pulley while we break that nut loose. Also, before we can do that, we've got two belts. The first one being this power steering belt. Okay, so there's two mountain bolts. There's one here and there's one down here. Hopefully you can see. So you want to loosen those up and then you'll use this wing nut here and that'll be able to move the power steering down and up so that you can loosen it up the power steering pump down and up so you can loosen this up let's get the belt off and we might end up just getting this thing a little bit more out of the way depending uh and the alternator belt let's get from the bottom so you can see this alternator so you can see that on the adjustment bracket there's one bolt right there that um, holds the alternator and there's one on the top of the alternator that kind of where it hinges from. So you loosen both of those up and then there's a wing nut or a wing bolt on the front of that. 
same concept. You'll loosen that up in order to um, get the belt off of the alternator. So there's not really nothing to that. So I'm gonna pull these belts real quick. After that, we'll check back with you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be pulling the timing, well, sorry, we're gonna be pulling the crank pulley. Um, we'll pull these timing covers off that we'll be able to uh, get access to, um, access to it. That sensor should be behind the crank pulley, behind the uh, lower timing cover. So let's get this accessory stuff off and then we'll start getting into the heart of it. So just a quick little update. We got the, um, I just went ahead and completely removed the power steering pump just to get out of the way. to make it easier to get to our alternator um, bolts and everything. So we're gonna loosen this up the same way. One bolt here, there's one bolt down the bottom, which I showed you earlier. And then that one wing nut up front and uh, we'll get that loose, get it swung down just enough to get our belt off and then we'll uh, move on. All right, so at this point, we've got all of our drive belts off. So now we need to remove center crank bolt. So this is the tool I was talking about. You can insert it there, you can put a breaker bar, um, and you know, you can run it up against the frame or against the ground to keep this from rotating while you break that center bolt loose. They are pretty tight. I think they're about 180 pounds or so. So uh, um, I'm just gonna try, I've got a half inch impact. Just gonna try and break it off with that, break it loose with that. But if not, we will use this. But uh, either way, we're gonna probably have to use this to uh, whenever we torque it back down to spec. So 19 millimeter, no problem taking that out. So now we will remove this. Note there is a keyway in there that you wanna make sure you don't lose. Right, so next we're gonna start and see a couple bolts holding that lower uh, cover on. So we're gonna start removing those, but it uh, looks like we'll probably have to pop this top one loose first. Let's go ahead and do that. Here is probably for our cam sensor. Okay. Just getting everything a little once over. You know, if you've got to go this far into it and you've never replaced a timing belt or anything, it's a good time to do it. This one was changed about 30,000 miles ago. I'm just checking it. You know, along with the cam and crank seals, we changed all that. Everything still looks good and dry. Belt still looks good. We changed the water pump tensioner. I don't see any problems there so far, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, get that lower pulley, uh, lower cover pulled off. And it's just a couple bolts. Gotta go ahead and come on up off of there. I'm really pleased with everything I see down here. Um, crank seal and everything. Everything's still real dry here in the timing compartment. Here's our sensor right here. One bolt. And um, so one electrical plug in. Okay, there we go. It's just a little stuck. So we got electrical connector out of the way. So now all we gotta do is just take loose our one ten millimeter bolt. So it's got a new seal on it. So, looks identical to me. So, that's good. So, let's go ahead. 
I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this in place, and then we're gonna do a little bit of, um, like I said, because I'm, I'm changing it anyway. Then we're gonna do a little bit of problem diagnosis. Okay, so as you can see, we have our uh, new sensor installed. So we're just gonna do a little bit of uh, just checking some wiring just to make sure everything is good there. And like I said, I'm really sure that it is, but we're just gonna check anyway. That way we can just talk over a little bit about, uh, you know, just some repair procedure on this particular issue. So the first thing I want you to do, <coughs> reset the ECU, start the engine. Um, yeah, I already done all that, blah, blah, blah. Measure voltage between the um, yellow black wire on the connector and body ground. All right, so the yellow black wire is, should be the one on the end. Yeah, this one here on the end, okay. So I've got, these are great for door wiring, for checking wiring. Just a little pin probe, i to place that right there. Voltage, okay. So we need to check, we're checking for voltage between, and we've got our ignition on, ignition switches on. So we're checking voltage from there to our, uh, to our chassis ground. Okay, so we've grounded it to a bolt on the engine. We're getting 12 volts. Right. Measure voltage between the yellow black wire and body ground. <coughs> Is it battery voltage? Yes. Go to step seven. If not, repair open in the wire between the main relay one and the um, crank sensor. So we're going to step seven. Measure voltage between uh, terminal one, which is going to be the blue wire and body ground, and it's wanting about five volts. So, let's change this to the blue wire, which is going to be the one on this side. And again, make sure you got your ignition switched on. Okay, so let's. See if we get voltage there. So well, it's about five volts. So let's see. Yep, 505. Perfect. Okay, so next. So about five volts. Yes, we'll go to step eight. No, we'll go to step 10. So we're gonna go, let's just see what step 10 is. Measure voltage between ACM, okay. <clears throat> step eight, measure voltage between Crank sensor uh, connector terminals uh, two and three. Right, so that's going to be the brown and yellow and the yellow and black. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to have to get a second um, pin probe here. <clears throat> this is a great set. You can buy this set right here for like 15 bucks from Harbor Freight. I've got this basically the same set that I bought off the tool truck for about three times that. So. And this one's just as good. I've got it on those two, the uh, the yellow and black and the brown and yellow. Okay, just as it calls for. So anyway, so let's see what it wants. It wants between the brown and yellow and the yellow and black, is there battery voltage? Okay, 12 volts. Yes, go to step nine. Substitute a non good um, crank sensor and recheck, <clears throat> which is what we just done. We're putting a new sensor on. So we'll reset our code. We'll run the car and then, um, we'll see what happens. But so it says after you do that and recheck. So if, you know, if you're still getting codes, three, 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 five or three, thirty six, I'm not even sure what three thirty six is, but if you're still getting those co codes, it says update the ECU or substitute a good known, <clears throat> ECU, which I've actually already done that, if you think about it, because I was have I had a problem with the ECU on this car for a different reason, and I just changed it to another ECU, and it fixed that problem, but this problem that I'm having right now with this crank sensor was present before and after I switched ECU, so it's two ECUs with the same issue, issue so I know it's not an ECU, um, and like I said, we already pretty well knew it was our sensor, so substitute so an own good sensor and recheck. <clears throat> so 
obviously it says is it still indicated yes you know wants you to change the ECU no replace the original sensor which is what we're doing so basically uh, everything should be good but if there's you know if yours didn't check out like ours it gives you a whole different uh, thing to do and we'll put y'all on to this a good free diagnostic site this is a great site for free it's charm c h a r m dot l i and it's got everything up to like a 14 year model but really good info on here this is stuff like that you pay for for a subscription it's that good so we've got this this is a really good resource all right so at this point we've got everything put back together and buttoned up uh forgot to mention i think that the spec for the um, crank pulley bolt is 14 foot pounds initial torque and then 90 degrees from there one more thing uh when you're in there make sure that the uh, trigger wheel for that crank sensor is nice and clean make sure there's not a bunch of dirt and gunk and oil and anything like that all over that thing because that could possibly um interfere with the ability for the sensor to pick up a reading uh, ours is nice and clean obviously because we've been there n uh, not too long ago but just make sure while you're in there that all that's nice and clean so at this point we're going to uh, clear out our codes drive it make sure nothing comes back um and just check for any drivability issues um i'm very confident that this was the problem but you know we'll being that it was the intermittent problem you know we'll have to drive the car for probably a couple days to make sure nothing's going to come back but um i'm not too worried about it i pretty pretty well know that well we got a leak here but let's go ahead we're gonna come in here and clear the codes out and then uh crank it up and take it for a drive okay so rear fault codes dtc's all right let's go back here let's clear our fault codes all right. All right. okay so let's just slide it double check there's nothing there and yeah, nothing in our um in a minute okay no codes there right so let's go ahead and crank it up and let's just get everything at once over our belts and everything are riding through. So I'll pull this through. Everything looks good. Right, so I'm going to take it on a quick test drive around the block and then um, I'll update you real quick. So, no uh, malfunction indicator lights. Drivability is great. It drives just, it really runs better than it has in a really long time. Even before the car got to such a significant issue with drivability and uh, cutting out, it was a little small things. But um, anyway, oh, it's completely gone. It really drives better than it has in a long time. So, uh, really happy with that you know like i said i spent 70 plus tax no, maybe about 85 80 85 bucks on the sensor you can get them as cheap as like 10 dollars, but like i said i wouldn't uh wouldn't risk it and get a good one that way you don't have to worry about it but got it squared away uh it probably took me between changing it out filming this video and uh you know checking the wiring and stuff you know i might spend two hours on it so pretty good not bad at all it's a good uh good repair and uh I hope this really helped you guys out. If you got any other questions uh, about this particular car, engine, problems, um, let me know. Or spe specifically anything relating to this issue, this issue, uh, be glad to um, help you out uh, with it. If you just um, contact me, let me know. And uh, anything you want to add to it, let me know. Appreciate you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks.